a very good evening to you and thank you so much once again for sticking to Y254 TV. My name is Cheryl Blessing and you are watching The Power Talk Show. Now this year we've been having so many powerful, powerful conversations and today being the 10th of October, it is the World Mental Health Awareness Day. So we want to do something related to mental health awareness and there's a common term that has been coming up, gas lighting. Do we know what this term mean, means? Are we familiar with the experience of gaslighting? Have we been gaslit before or have we been the ones gaslighting people? So I want us to talk more about this. It's a very common term these days, but do we really understand what it means? So our conversation today is centered around gaslighting and where do we draw the line? Joining me live on set is Anthony Njenga, who is a life coach and a counselor. Karibu sana. Asante. How are you doing? I'm well. It's yeah, I know it's been such a long time, but I'm glad you're here to have this conversation with us. Yeah, and right next to Anthony we have Lynette Wanjiru, who is an entrepreneur. Atawisim Geni Lynette, Karibu Tena. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to have both of you here. And I want us to talk about this this very important conversation because Kunaita Mimikwa thrown around everywhere, gaslighting. So what's the difference between genuine disagreement and manipulation in the form of gaslighting specifically? That's the question Nimekuliza on our social media platforms at Y254. Tuambie, tofauti between genuine disagreement na manipulation, which expresses itself in the form of gaslighting. What's the difference between these two things? So to kickstart the conversation, because I know tuna tuna kama words nyingi, kuna delulu, sijui nini, nini. So we have been talking about gaslighting, but sometimes people are not fully aware what gaslighting is. Anthony, yes. as our expert tonight, could you tell us what you would define as gaslighting and what's the difference between gaslighting and other forms of manipulation? Okay, uh, thank you so much for that question. Huh? So to define gaslighting, yeah, I in a way that someone will understand, someone who is watching will simply understand. So gaslighting is a form of psychological manipulation. Yeah? whereby now the perpetrator tries to make the victim doubt their own perception, their memory, and the reality, you know. So now, uh, gaslighting is more of, um, it's like an emotional abuse, which is bad for anyone's mental health. Eh? Uh, unlike now, the, the, the normal disagreements that people have, eh? gaslighting now is really bad because now people who are gaslighters, uh, the moment now you are the victim who is now being gaslighted, eh, it will. The moment now you experience gaslighting, either in your relationship, either in the friendship, either at workplace, it will be. It will be very difficult for you to actually distinguish the actual truth, or is is, is this a, is this is this or is this particular situation a, is is it the truth or is it a lie? So yeah. it is more of uh, an emotional abuse, and gaslighting is really bad, and it really happens. Uh, mostly uh, in friendships and relationships without people realizing that, oh, really this is gaslighting and this is not just a normal disagreement. Yeah. So gaslighting is actually bad for anyone's mental health because now this is a perpetrator trying to make now this victim now look as if, you know, they, 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 they make you feel as if you're stupid or, you know, something of the sort. Yeah. So it is bad for your mental health. It is bad for anyone's mental health. So if you're experiencing gaslighting, either at work, either in your, either uh, you have friends who are, maybe you're experiencing gaslighting, or maybe you don't understand what gaslighting is, uh, just get to understand that this is an emotional abuse, and it is actually bad for anyone's or for your mental health. Yeah. I like the way you've put it so clearly. It's bad for your mental health and yes. it's a form of manipulation. Yes. Someone wants to make you doubt what you saw. Yes. What you you sangine, mm -hmm. you know ni meona umevaka la blue leo. Mm -hmm. But mtu like ai mimi hapana hata sina ngo ya color blue. Mm -hmm. That's like gaslighting. Yes. It makes you doubt your sanity. It makes you doubt if you actually saw what you saw yes. or if you experienced what you experienced. Mm -hmm. Lynette, this is something that has come up recently. We've put a name to the mm -hmm. action. But what was the first time you realized, eh, mimi umtu ni gaslight? What was your first experience like? Well, personally, um, I believe it what I think and what I have before you actually change my mental state about a situation about a situation or anything you really need to work on it so for me if I have thought about something and I've concluded it in my brain uh, emotionally and mentally uh, 
sometimes mainly it happens with people that you love. So you're like, well, I might be wrong. This might be happening. I, I maybe I should give him like a, or him or her benefit of doubt. So it happens mainly with people that you love, and you're like, I don't wanna hurt the emotions. Maybe if I tell them, or they're hurting me, but if I tell them what I really feel about what they said or what they're doing, mm -hmm. it's gonna hurt them. You end up hurting and harming your own self in, uh, like in, pres in preference of not telling them the reality. Yeah, mm -hmm. to preserve their emotions. Yes. You're thinking about someone else, it's not about you in that moment. Yeah. And you've mentioned it usually happens between someone, people who love each other. There has to be the emotion of, I care about you, mm -hmm. I have some sort of feelings towards you mm -hmm. for me to experience gaslighting. Yes. So we're, we're going to talk about how it uh, ex expresses itself it fa in families, in uh, friendships, in uh, relationships especially. Mm -hmm. But before we go there, I was wondering, I was just thinking about this conversation, and is it possible to gaslight yourself? Anthony, can I sit and gaslight myself into thinking, hey, by the way, maybe this is the reality, instead of what is actually the reality? Well, I think... Uh, the, the moment you get to that level where you feel like you can gaslight yourself, I think it comes from a point of now you have either experienced uh, gaslighting directly, it is maybe actually happening either in your uh, relationship or you have experienced it directly. So to get to, get to that level, it could distinguish the truth and a lie, you know? Yeah. Because now if it gets to a level where you think that, you know, um, you, 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 you gaslighting yourself, eh? Normally, I feel it's it, it, you probably you have had a direct experience with a gaslighting perspective yeah. from this perpetrator to a point it makes you feel like now you are you can you can also gaslight yourself, mm. but you you naturally I'm a kawaida too. Always it's difficult to yeah. just gaslight yourself if really you're sane enough and you know that this is a reality and this is how things are. Then I don't think it will be possible unless now you have experienced a direct form of gaslighting yeah so it, it it has to be rooted in experience where someone gaslit you so that atabo will adapt equal like a habit that mm. you have mm. but now on that note mm. when we think about gaslighting we think about it from the negative perspective mm -hmm. is there any positivity i could I, I was just thinking about uh, this situation i have exams tomorrow Nasi jasome is the exam. Mm -hmm. Na nikai ni jambe, imagine umesoma. Like imagine unajua kila kitu nyina kuja kwa exam. Is that a form of gaslighting? And is there gaslighting that's positive or is gaslighting generally just negative? Lynette, what do you think about that? Uh, for me, I think it can lay in both sides, either negative or positive. Uh, like for example, as your example in your metumia, we would say, you know, gaslighting. We, ju we were just explained before some minutes ago it's more of a mental state it's a, it's a psychological state so uh normally people take it in a negative way but sometimes if you think about it it can be in a positive side uh i might think it it's positive in that state maybe i've been hearing negative stuff about me people would shame someone for example and i'm like you know what <coughs> lynette you're beautiful regardless what they tell you, you're beautiful. If I keep on telling myself over and over again, I'll end, it'll end up sticking in my brain. Regardless the negativity I'll get using the same, same thing, I'll, I would have already gaslighted myself in a positive way. Mm. So I think it lays in both ways. It depends the way you let it affect you. It can mm. be positive or negative. So it can, it's either or, depending on the situation. Yes. Do you agree with that, Anthony? And could you maybe, maybe tell us, what personality traits because is it tied to a mental condition where there are specific conditions where gaslighting <coughs> is just a common thing within that personality trait uh, now uh based on now your example and what you said i feel like um i don't think there's any positive side of gaslighting no mm. like let's just be realistic eh? for example you you have your examinations eh? and um Kabisa unajua, maybe you have not read, read enough. And you tell yourself that you have read enough. Well, the reality is that you have not read enough. And your memory is not yet really good enough to uh, even handle that examination. Well, in the example she has used about maybe um, telling yourself that you're beautiful. For me, I don't think there's any good thing about uh, gaslighters or people or perpetrators who gaslight. And now, talking of gaslighting, 
as I said in the beginning, it is a form of psych a psychological manipulation. It's, an, it's, it's a form of an emotional abuse. Now, normally, I would categorize people who are gaslighters or manipulators or emotional abusers as narcissistic. Normally, I would put them in that category because if you find yourself interacting or maybe you're in a relationship, a romantic relationship, or you have friends or a friend that is portraying some narcissistic signs. And one of the signs of a narcissist is gaslighting. The second one is manipulative. You see? So meaning um, a narcissist is a, is, a, is a personality disorder that is a mental illness. It is a per narcissistic personality disorder which is under um, personality disorders. And narcissist, narcissistic is part of it, and it is also categorized under a mental illness. So I, I wouldn't say gaslighters, manipulators, emotional abusers really, I don't think it has a good side. And uh, normally, if you find that you're in a, or you're engaging yourself or in a relationship either with your friend or with your partner, and they're portraying these signs of gaslighting, normally, if you just, kiangalia vizuri, these people have more of the signs of a narcissist. And now it becomes very bad. And as I said, gaslighting is bad for your mental health. And it can make it difficult for you to distinguish the truth from lies. Mm. Mm. That's, that's fascinating because it's linked to narcissism. Yes. Where someone is, narcissism is mostly associated with someone who's very selfish. And yes. they, they just want things that work for them mm. and to their advantage yes. without considering someone else's feelings. Exactly. So then gaslighting comes in with mm. that. Mm. So mostly it's just negative. Yes. Hakuna venye neza kwa positive, hakuna venye unaza gaslight in like a positive way. No, you cannot. Now the mm. moment you keep on telling yourself that you can gaslight yourself in a positive way, as I said, it is maybe from a point of where now you have experienced direct gaslighting, mm. either from someone or like now that perpetrator, you are the victim now. You have experienced it directly or you are currently experiencing it either in your relationship that you're in and relationship could be with your partner or with, or with your friends or maybe your relation at work. So with that, in one way or another, it makes it difficult for your perception and your memory and the reality for you to just distinguish the truth and there is also a lie. Mm. The truth is that, for example, you, have not, you, uh, you are sitting for your examinations tomorrow. The truth is that you have not read enough. You know? Yeah. You know, the, the lie is that you're going to pass because even your memory itself is not, uh, I just study Vizuri, I had enough information to actually be able to sit for that examination. So I really strongly feel that there's no positive thing about being a gaslighter because the moment you keep on telling yourself that gaslighting is on the positive side or it has a positive side, then that's a distorted reality where you have been initiated by someone else and that, that it's, a, it's a perpetrator who has made you have that, that thought or feeling of now, maybe uh, there, there's now the positive side of gaslighting, which mm -hmm. there is none. And when you think about that, there are mm -hmm. people who've experienced it, even from their childhood, mm -hmm. based on their parents, yes. relatives, aunts, siblings. So they don't really know the difference because it's a reality for them. So how deeply is it in families? Lynette, I don't know if maybe you have someone within your family who, when you grew up, you realize, eh, um, sebedal kwa gaslight. And the experience for you was kind of shocking because thinking about what you thought was the truth and the, the truth they tried to feed you, and then now you can see it for what it really is. Have you had an experience like that? Yeah, I believe everyone has. When you're growing up, you know, uh, these aunts, ulkwaskia auntie wa Nairobi, auntie wa Maju, when they used to come back home and they wanted to have this hierarchy of uh, treatment and stuff, so they used to tell us, you know, you need to study hard, ukifail, or if you don't do something, uh, anything right, onakwambia, ndiyo maana maisha yako itaisonga. You see, like, those words, zinanzanga kustik, as a child, zinanzanga kustik in you, in a child's brain. Yeah. If you tell someone, a child, wewe ni ngombe, wewe ni kondo, wewe huile, wewe hushiki kitu, I believe it stacks in their brain. Mm -hmm. So later, unapata uyu mtoto akiwa shule, ata akifail, he's actually comfortable. Because yeah. nilambio mi ni ngombe, nilambio mi sita songa, nilambio sita hiperform. So they feel comfortable under their own skin. So um, definitely from parents and relatives, they do that a lot. And uh, I think they tend to be, we, we should say, they're supposed to be mindful. Because yeah. mtu mwenye haji, haji ya mini sana, ujo kuna wale, 
ukiambiwa kitu sasa hivi just make a, a mimic out of something out of you maybe you t in any physical part of your body and I feel very belittled yeah. unaona so i think uh, in families it happens a lot yeah uh, those who have step families i'm sure they still go through a lot and uh, it's uh, it's really tough mm -hmm. i would say experience i've experienced it myself yeah and uh, it was never a good experience yeah, and uh, sadly, <laughs> it's a common thing in <laughs> African households. Yeah. There's a lot of gaslighting in African households. And before we get deeper into this conversation, I just want to remind you the conversation I'm having with you online, which is at Y254. Nimekuuliza, what's the difference between a normal disagreement and manipulation in the form of gaslighting? That's the thing I want to know because so many of us have experienced gaslighting to experience disagreements with people. But how can you tell apart this is a normal disagreement? agreement and this is manipulation in the form of gaslighting in our homes most times our parents don't even realize they're gaslighting you perhaps now that we get older you know you realize maybe they were stressed maybe they didn't know any better maybe kulikuwa na kitu ilifanyika through the day wakakuja ku project all on you but now anthony someone who's experienced gaslighting from a narcissistic parent preferably or a narcissistic sibling so throughout their whole lives they've experienced that how can they deal with that and understand that this was gaslighting it is not my fault and they separate the truth from the lie that they were fed well number one um it becomes a challenge eh? number one we should start it at uh, that point eh? the moment you have developed or you have um, taken in some negative personality traits eh? from the environment that you grew up in and the people that are in the environment that you grew up in, growing up, uh, it becomes a challenge to actually separate yourself from the same. You know, I feel like one of the ways in which you can be able to separate yourself from that kind of uh, negative personality trait is by accepting feedback and trying to work on the feedback in whichever, in the best way possible. Because let's just be honest, eh? Uh, normally, our person we develop or we everyone kila mtu binadamu wote our personalities are normally from are normally developed from how we were brought up, the environment that we were in that we grew up in, the people that were in that environment, eh? and in one way or another we develop some personalities. It could be negative, it could be ne it could be positive, and now the point where it becomes negative is maybe you've grown up with a, a narcissistic kind of parent eh? or guardian or uh, Maybe someone who used to take care of you at that time. It could be a house help. Eh? In one or another, you develop some negative personality traits. So growing up, it becomes a challenge to distinguish actually um, like the reality and what is not the reality, like the lie and the truth. Eh? So I think or I feel the best way possible in how to separate yourself from that kind of emotional abuse or that kind of person, that personality, that negative personality of being a gaslighter or a manipulator or a narcissist is number one, is accepting feedback the way it comes. Because normally as human beings, we really are open to feedback. When you're told something about you, there's something in psychology we call blind spots. Eh? Blind spots are some of the things that, uh, some of the things that you don't know, that people know, you see? There are things that, Cheryl, someone, you, there's, there are things that you know about yourself, but there are things that other people know more about yourself. Or actually, there are things that actually more other people know more about you that you don't know. So normally, when someone tells you something about you that is not really good, we normally take it the wrong way. For example, let me use a good example. If I tell you, Cheryl, that you're normally selfish, eh? uh, and I give you an instance of your selfish behavior, normally we, we are normally in denial and we are shocked, like, oh, really, am I selfish? You know, the reason why this person has told you is because maybe there's something you did or there's a particular thing and they will explain it. And you need to be open to feedback. The moment you start accepting feedback the way it comes, then in one way or another it builds your conscience eh? and you will be very uh, open to maybe, you'll, you'll think about it. Why did this person tell me that I'm this kind of, selfish behavior? why did this person tell me I'm this way or this way? Why didn't she or he have to tell me something positive about myself, about me? You see? So the moment you learn to be open to feedback the way it comes, eh, I feel like that, that is the first step. And the moment someone tells you something like that, for example, if I tell you you're selfish, now it is upon you as Cheryl to sit down with yourself and realize, oh, so-and-so, Anthony told me I'm selfish. Is there an aspect or is there a 
kuna part nilisema ama kuna kitu nilifanya nilionyesha myself is behavior and what can i do about it so it starts with being open to feedback because let's be uh, realistic it is normally a challenge growing up in a very narcissistic narcissistic kind of environment that has made you in one, on, uh, one way or another unconsciously pick up some negative personality traits and grow up with it eh? normally it's a challenge to actually deal with it or separate but the moment you learn to number one, be open to feedback and work on the feedback that has been given to you i feel like that is the first step towards actually working on that particular issue or behavior yeah. or whichever yeah yes and the truth is most times you do not like negative feedback mm -hmm. we may need it but we don't like hearing it and it takes maturity for you to accept and say okay maybe mm -hmm. Anthony was right and maybe I need to work on this and that aspect of myself but that also brings in the idea of self-awareness you have to have self-awareness that I was emotionally abused in this manner by so and so and I need to address it so that I can work on it and it's it, it's you know it's it's a very different journey for everyone the people who are very self-aware from a very early age and the people who will go their whole lives without having self-awareness completely and then they can pass it on from one person to another also another thing that you mentioned with manipulation if you're used to it it makes you more open to attracting people who manipulate you because that's what you know and that tends to happen in that maybe you're abused as a child so you find friends and partners who are also abusive in a similar way Lynette, before we get deeper into attracting people who are similar to what we experience as kids, how else do you think that we ourselves can detach? The way you give the examples of manipulation that has happened, we noticed it in maybe our parents, our relatives, our siblings. How can we consciously say, Nisawa nili manipulatiwa, nisawa watu alikuwa na nigaslight, so that you heal? Because you still have to go back home. It's not like you've left that environment completely. You'll still go back to that African home. You'll still meet with these relatives. And they'll still most likely have the same characters. So how can you heal so that when you get back in those environments, you're not triggered to go back to, you know, reacting the same way that you used to when you were younger? Well, for me, I would say first, as uh, Anthony said, it's, it comes with awareness. You have to know who you are. You have to know your character traits. You have to know your pros and cons. So the moment you are aware of who you are and what makes you you, actually personally I do say, I know what makes me Lynette. I'm sure you also know what makes you, what makes you Cheryl. I'm sure what he knows what he makes him uh, Anthony. So when you have that perspective of who you are, uh, regardless the environment you are in, you, you always lift your chin up and say, it's fine. Even the negativity feedbacks that you might get, you're like, well, okay, I might not show I'm hot or I've taken it into, into consideration, but I'll be like, later on when I'm going to meditate, I'll be like, wow, this is someone I have never met and said something, so and so told me some time back, so I think I need now to start thinking about it. So it, it comes with, you have to get to know who you are first. Yeah. With that, because uh, if you know, personally, let me use a, use a good example like myself, I know I'm confident. So I might get somewhere and I'm like, Lynette, I'm gonna squeeze you because shy. I'm like, ah, I know myself. Maybe yeah. you, misund you misunderstood me, but I know I'm confident. But thank you. Maybe next time I'll try and uh, project my confidence to you. Yeah. So I think it comes with a matter of awareness. You have yeah. to really know yourself and be self-conscious of who you are, yeah. ever. And I like what you said. There's, there's something that you brought out, and that's a way of you drawing boundaries. And saying, because I know myself, I know that this feedback is not real, yeah. but I'll take it into consideration. Mm -hmm. So, based on what we're talking about, if you've experienced a manipulative uh, parent, most likely you'll attract manipulative friends, because that's what you're used to. But how do you get to that level where you can even check your friends and say, eh, by the way, Apo, unanipima. And this is the truth, and I know what I believe. So that you also, because I think... Most times we start by drawing boundaries with our friends. Then you can draw boundaries with your parents, relatives, things like that. So at what level? How do you, how do you work on that, Anthony, to the level where if you see manipulation, if you see gaslighting, which maybe your friends are trying to do on you, you tell them, no, this is my boundary and you're crossing it and I do not respect it. So that you can eventually do that where the original source of the gaslighting began in your life. Um, Sherilla? To be, to be sincere and honest, eh? uh, 
assertiveness assertiveness means being firm to your yes or a no and the moment you do or you say something to me that does not seem nice and honestly when i hear what you're telling me or when i see what you're doing to me i can just um see the details of gaslighting and manipulation and emotional abuse in that whole scenario it is for me to just tell you this is how things are normally that is how i am let me speak from personal my experience when someone tells me or when someone does something to me that i i can really see or i can tell from how they are doing it or how they are saying it there is a level of manipulation in this there is a level of gaslighting there is a level of, level of an emotional abuse in this i will be open and telling them uh, tell to tell them that you know what this is not how you should have done it this is not what you should have said instead th- th- uh, you should have said or done this and this you know or if it is a no just be firm with your no if you cannot be able to tolerate friends because Cheryl they are friends that are used to manipulation they are friends that are perpetrators and they are and maybe they have picked it un- unconsciously from their environment growing up and uh, it becomes a challenge separating now themselves from that particular p- negative person- personality trait that they picked you know so if i realize that i have a friend like that or maybe it is my partner in this re- romantic relationship that we are in i can i can specify and see some level and some details of uh, gaslighting and manipulation and emotional abuse it is upon me then to tell them and address it if i am keen enough and if i am aware of myself and what i don't stand for and my boundaries and tell them and be specific by the way this is not what you should have told me you should have done this and that you should have told me this and that you see but the moment you don't directly tell the uh, maybe tell this person or you're not keen and aware of what your friends or your partner do to you that's now the moment whereby you become like ni kama uko ni kama ushaingiana na hao watu because you know gaslighters they are so it is so easily to be easy to be uh, codependent on them yeah. because you know they will make you feel as if you're the stupid person i'm the one who is right like the perpetrator will make the victim feel like ni kama yeye ndio like victim ni kama hakuna kitu anasema like mm. wewe mimi ndo najua you see mm. so it becomes a challenge you know so um yeah it becomes a very big issue and it's, it is it is it is uh, upon you to just be firm yeah. and assertive to what you cannot tolerate and what you can tolerate and if you see there is a pattern continuous pattern of your friends of uh, maybe if it is a colleague at work uh, if it is your partner uh, a pattern a continuous pattern of gaslighting of manipulation of emotional abuse and maybe the previous ones you never addressed it because of one reason or another it is now upon you to be firm and tell them and directly tell them and face it, face this perpetrator head on because if you don't do that this perpetrator will keep on doing it to you yeah. keep on doing it to you and you know for them for these perpetrators they feel like wewe ni kama haujui Kenya wanafanya you know one thing that i tell people gaslighters or narcissists eh? mm-hmm. you know narcissists are these people who hold these personalities of manipulation emotional abuse gaslighting this most of the time these people are normally aware of what they do to you or yeah. what they say so they will intentionally hurt you and they know they have hurt you then the moment you face them head on and you tell them by the way you express your concern based on what they did to you or said to you now they will blame it they will shift they will bl- they blame shift it yeah. to, to to you to make you feel as if you're the you're when do when do so they will make you feel responsible for the actions they made you see and I, i like that you've said you have to be very assertive yes. and you've brought out very important examples of relationships work mm. which i want us to get deeper into in the mm-hmm. second part of this conversation but okay. meanwhile let me take a very short break and you can go on our platforms at y254 right now and tell me what's the difference between a genuine disagreement and manipulation especially manipulation in the form of gaslighting that's our conversation today so go on our platforms at y254 and i will sample your comments once we are back from our short break stay tuned to y254 tv this is the power talk show